Hey guys, Dylan from Noble Records coming at you with another video. I am so thrilled and honored to be able to tell you this story about this collection that we just got. Um, it is an absolutely incredible story, an incredible collection. I will say this is my favorite collection that I've ever bought. Uh, not only because of the killer records, but because of the backstory and the people that I dealt with and all that stuff. So stay tuned for the story. It's a story about this young man who had this incredible record collection. Uh, he passed away in 1992 and uh, his parents and brother uh, basically kept this record collection in a time capsule and um, anytime they wanted to kind of a glimpse into his life they would go through and look at these records again and uh, they, they kept them down for 30 years and no one saw them for 30 years and they finally decided to let him go so this is the story of how all this happened and it's a, just an incredible story um, I think that you'll really enjoy it. So stick around for that story. Before I get started, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button to subscribe to our channel. That would really help us, you know, s grow and spread the word of all these records and all the stuff that we're doing. And also we have um, a record store in Matthews, North Carolina called Noble Records. Follow us on Instagram so you can stay in contact with us and uh, we can get to know y'all. So um, I'll tell the story of how this happened. Like I said, I'll try to separate it to where you can fast forward to the records if you just want to see the records because the records are absolutely amazing. But these uh, these records belong to uh, a guy named Chris Whitson. Um, his family reached out to me um, and with a they sent me a spreadsheet of everything, very very detailed spreadsheet. Um, I was on vacation, I didn't see it because I wasn't paying attention to my phone, and uh, Logan. Uh, the, our shop manager called me. He said, hey, I hate to interrupt your vacation, but you need to look at the spreadsheet because these, these folks are selling this record collection and um, there's other record stores looking at it and there's some people have already put in bids for it. So you need to look at it so you don't miss out. So uh, that particular day, we were doing a lot of driving. So um, I grabbed my phone and I was looking at the spreadsheet and my mind was blown by just the incredible stuff in this collection. There's jazz, there's blues, there's punk, there's metal, there's classic rock, there's almost anything you can imagine. There's an incredible hip hop collection. The punk collection's unreal. Who collects like this other than, I mean, I do. I, I collect all over the place, but a lot of people don't have just, they like everything like that. And and the stuff he had was so, I mean, there's Sun Ra, there's, there's um, it's Stooges, I mean, Misfits, all this crazy, you know, early Nirvana, all that stuff. And I, um, I was like, man, I got to get in on this. So I called Larry. He's the, he was Chris's brother, and he said, hey, uh, you know, he told me the whole story about Chris and about his collecting and all that stuff. And I was hooked, line and sinker. I wanted to go look at these records. Only problem, I was in Maine and I was in a car, so I was driving home. So we drove home. Um, we, I mean, we were coming home the next day anyway. So we got home on Saturday. Uh, on Monday morning at 6 a.m., me and Logan jumped in the car and we drove up to about an hour north of Knoxville, uh, Tennessee. So it was about a five hour drive for us one way. So we did 10 hours driving that day. We got up to this beautiful, beautiful cabin on the side of a mountain. Uh, it's got four floors. So uh, the two main ones in the middle and then I had a loft and then I had a basement. So we go down to the basement. Um, and like I said, this is on top of a mountain. Um, it, it was hard to get to the top. <laughs> So get out of this basement and um, in the picture is Bob and Larry. Bob's the dad, Larry's the son. And not pictured is Lane, who Lane is the other brother uh, who actually lives in Florida. He's had been heavily involved in the process, but wasn't able to make it the day of the sale. They told us the story of Chris and I just said, tell me about him. Tell me about what made him tick. Tell me about his collecting habits, all that stuff. And he said, well, he was uh, really just in, into the records, he was into music, he was a musician. Um, they had his bike down there, they had his, his guitar down there, his bass guitar that he played. And it was just like, like, you know, almost like a shrine to him. He had all all his records, all the stuff. It almost broke my heart to buy it, but they, you know, it's kind of their grieving process. They felt like, you know, what should we do with this stuff? What would he have wanted? And that's, so these records could be enjoyed by other people again. So um, we started going through the records and it's awesome stuff, it's amazing. They had a price in mind. It was a lot of money, but they had a price in mind, and and um, it wasn't crazy. The the number wasn't crazy to me. Um, but we're going through, going through, going through, and I'm I'm thinking of you know, it, it, it's worth it. And a lot of times you'll negotiate with people and all this stuff, and just trying to do math on how you, you still got to do math. You can't just jump the gun and say, okay, we'll do it. You got to do math to make sure everything's there and it's worth it and all that stuff. And then I said, you know, um, <laughs> is there 
did he have any seven inches? I mean, there's all this killer punk stuff. Surely he's got seven inches. So he's like, yeah, we didn't have not cataloged them or anything, but they're right here. And he pulls out two crates of seven inches. And my mind was blown by the seven inches. I'll just show you uh, the first one I saw, this negative approach. So stay tuned, we'll get to that. And I was like, all right, we're good. Gave him the money. We had it a lot. We had to uh, carry him up three flights of stairs, all that stuff. But while we're looking, they're telling us about Chris. They're telling us about he was 23 years old, which is unbelievable that someone that age would have this level of taste. I mean, it's, it's unreal. No, I, there was no internet. It was 1992, and he still had he had to have been so deep in it at 23 years old. Unbelievable. Um, the guy was brilliant. But um, anyways. So, we, you know, he said he was in a band. I said, what's the band called? And they said, uh, it's called Massive Arm Linkage. And uh, I said, did they ever record anything? And they said, well, we think he might have, but we don't know. Uh, you know, we, we, I think that there might be a recording somewhere, but we don't have it. And, and, you know, we don't know. And so I was like, man, I'd love to hear it. So anyways, we're looking through and it's just face melting stuff. Amazing. Which I'm going to show you the stuff here in a minute. Um, and... He pulled out another box uh, and there were some cassette tapes in it. And Logan starts looking through it. And Logan says, oh my gosh, this tape says massive arm linkage. And they both looked up and Logan hands it to Bob, the dad. And uh, and and uh, he just like was like, oh my gosh. I mean, the, the look on his face, it was the most rewarding moment of my digging life. No matter all the records I've ever found, that tape, seeing him get it, he was more excited about that than I've ever seen anybody about anything. It was like you get he won the lottery. I mean, it was priceless. It was priceless. The look on his face was priceless. It was amazing. It was, the, it was the best part of the whole thing was him getting that tape. And he said, I'm going to sleep with this under my pillow. I mean, he, he, he thought it was gone forever and he would never. These are songs you know, that his son did and um, he's going to get to hear them. So... Side note about that, I am trying to get the recording of that tape. So I'm gonna try to get it out there so you guys can hear it. Trust me, I want I want to hear it. So I know that you guys will want to as well. But also quick add in, um, the band members have reached out to Larry, the brother, and um, they do have recordings. They're kind of pulling them together. Larry wanted me to make mention of it that uh, when I'm able to get all the recordings, if they post it or whatever, um, I will make sure to share it. So whatever recordings are out there will be heard. Anyway, so there wasn't a dry in the house when that happened. We were all, it was such an emotional thing, you know. Um, and his dad was telling me that he, you know, anytime he wanted to kind of catch a glimpse of his son, he would come down there and look through the records and try to figure out what, what it's something about him that he didn't know, you know, learn more about him and, and what he was excited about and what made him tick and all that stuff. And it was just, you know, thinking about it, I'm a dad and I'm a son, if something happened to my records, you know, my dad, he doesn't know anything about anything. I mean, he would know what maybe 1% of these records are. You know, he'd know what Leonard Skinner was and that's it. But um, thinking of him coming in here, this room, and just trying to get to know me through my collection, it's just emotional. You know, it really made me think about it. And then, you know, from the dad's perspective, if your son, if you lost him young, you know, you would do anything to try to figure out a little bit more about him and if that was the only thing he had you know it's just like an emotional thing so we loaded everything up um, bob had to leave i mean we were hugged i don't think i've ever hugged anybody i bought a collection from but we were hugging and and, and laughing and talking and crying it was just such a sweet moment uh with his family and so basically i've been in contact with larry larry is um as i said is chris's brother and their main motivation for selling this record is to get it out there so people will know Chris. So um, you're wondering how you can get your hands on these records. I'm gonna talk about it at the end of the video. Um, but when I do sell the records, we're going to be doing um, on October 14th, we're putting um, a lot of them out in the shop. We have an anniversary, that's when we're putting them out. And then we're also doing an online auction. So all that information will be at the end of the video. But I'm going to have a sticker that I'm gonna put on the sleeve of every album um, not on the actual sleeve, but the outer sleeve, and it will have his picture on it and say, uh, you know, from the personal collection of uh, Chris Whitson. And it'll have a QR code that will link to this video so you can hear the story. And so the people that get this record will know where it came from and they'll know that it came from him. 
So um, that's just the story, you know. Um, he he was he was a phenomenal uh, collector, but um, as exciting as that is, his family's love for him um, to where they didn't care about these records, they didn't know anything about this kind of music, but they cared so much about him and they loved him so much that they went through all this to just like try to get to know them. That's the that's the sweet sauce for me, I, I love it. Stay tuned for how you can get the records, how we'll be selling them, all that stuff will be at the end of the video, but right now you wanna see records. Let me show you these incredible records. Um, if this story has resonated with you in any way, I don't normally do this, but I'll ask you to consider sharing it anywhere you can, anywhere you find community, um, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, email, Reddit, whatever. If you wouldn't mind sharing the story because our whole goal here you know, obviously I'm a business, I gotta make money and all that stuff, but but why I'm asking you to share it is so, you know, all these records are gonna sell. I'm not worried about that. They're incredible, they sell themselves. But um, we want the story of Chris and his records to be out there so people will know him and know his collection and honor what he built because so much time and passion and love uh, go into collecting records like this that it's just something that me and the family think is really cool and we want people to see. So if you don't mind sharing the video somewhere, even if it's just a one person, uh, we would really appreciate it. We ended up grabbing the collection, um, settling up with them, and then I didn't even realize that, I didn't think about it, that the, the we were on the bottom floor. Um, so we had to carry these things up, I think three flights of steps, which was a little rough. It's about 2,500 LPs. So, um, but we did it and, you know, my, 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 uh, SUV survive the ride home, which is surprising. So let me show you some of the records because that's what you're here to see. This is a very, very, very well curated collection of all genres. It's uh, most genres anyways. It's everything. And, I, and looking at it, I, it reminds me so much of my collection now, but I promise you when I was 23, I didn't know what a lot of this stuff was. So um, anyways, just starting off with, if everybody saw the picture, what we're all holding is the Nirvana stuff. So. This is our Nirvana Bleach original. This is the second pressing, actually. The first pressing's on white vinyl and it's impossibly rare. But this is the second press, still the 1989 black vinyl. Uh, still extremely rare, um, extremely hard to find. Uh, I do already have one, so one will be for sale um, in the shop. Uh, we're doing a sale on October 14th, but I'll, I'll tell you more about that at the end of the video. Um, the one I was really excited to see is this uh, Nirvana. Never mind. This is the first press, the uh, for retail. So it's the master disc. It says master disc in the uh, dead wax. This is the best possible. A lot of people say the best sounding version of this record, and it's the very first U.S. press. Extremely rare. I looked for this record since I was a kid and, and found one about six months ago. Um, and so it, you know, this one is a tip top. Not, super, super, super nice copy. Um, this is probably maybe the most valuable record in the whole collection. Very rare, very clean. Um, you know, and more, a lot more Nirvana stuff. This is one, um, this is the Smells Like Teen Spirit promo. Um, and this is on yellow wax, pretty rare. Um, and this actually has his, his, uh, his handwriting on it, promo Chris. And he worked at the record exchange in Charlotte. So um, very, very cool. It has that sticker on it and everything. This is the Sliver 12 inch. Uh, and this, was, this one is very cool as well. I don't have one of these, so I'll, I'll be keeping this one. This is a Nirvana Blue 12 inch. Uh, this is the original press. It's a UK. Um, I've never seen one of these come in. This is very rare, but it's a, it's got blue love buzz been a sun stain on it. So um, very, very cool original press of that. He had, um, you know, some original Albert Productions ACDC titles, um, you know, Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap, um, Let There Be Rock. These are all the Australian alternate covers. Well, they're the original covers. Ours are the alternate covers, I guess, but, you know, this is an original Misfits. Uh, this is a first press of Alice Coltrane uh, and Farrah Sanders. I can never say that so I'm not going to, but extremely rare, really nice condition with the sticker. Um, I'll show you some, some other, you know, I'm gonna show different genres 
but he had these really cool and his and they were like we don't know what these records are they got scribbles all over them uh this is a l saturn uh sun Ra. he has several of these um and they're all autographed by um noel scott so he played with sun Ra. um and these are so he has all these uh sun Ra's, uh and then l saturn sun Ra's that are drawn on by by you know members of the band and all that stuff so that stuff is very, very cool, super rare. This is one that I could not believe, and I didn't actually realize that this was a promo until I got it home, but this is um, Bob Dylan's first record, and it's a promo. I have one of these, but this one is like so clean. I'm definitely gonna keep this one and sell the one I have. Um, it's got the demonstration not for sale on the back, and look at the wax on this thing, man. Um, it, you can see it's got the you can, on, the, on the label, it says demonstration copy, not for sale. Um, and this is, I have a copy, like I said, but it's not as nice as this one. This one is incredible. Um, think about someone not even ever heard of Bob Dylan. This sticker says a new star on Columbia Records. So unbelievable, super nice condition on this one. I was absolutely shocked when I saw it. So as I said before, we were looking through the records, looking through the records. We didn't think he had any seven inch stuff. But as I was looking through it, I saw so, so much killer punk stuff. I was like, he had to have had some seven inches. So I asked him, I was like, hey, do you have any? And he said, well, there are some 45s, but we haven't cataloged them or anything yet. I said, can we see them? <laughs> so he pulls them out. He's like, yeah, this comes with a collection, whatever. And I start flipping through. And as I do, and I showed you before, this negative approach, seven inch. Um, it is one of the most valuable records in here. Uh, this is uh, an original. This one does have the... Um, it has, there's the black text and the red text. This is the red text version, which I think is technically a second press, but still super rare. It's got the insert and everything with it. Very, very, very nice. These um, these retail for, I don't know, 700 bucks, something like that. They're, they're very, very rare. Um, and when I saw that, like my, this never happens. Like hardly ever do my hands start shaking, but my hands started shaking. I was like, oh my gosh. Um, this is a bootleg Misfits. There's some bootleg Nirvana stuff. This one's cool because it's on a Vertigo label, but it's bootleg, um, you know, stuff like that. There's a whole, there's a ton of seven inch stuff, but this is a, this is a legit a Nirvana fluid seven inch. Uh, this is a really cool one I was excited to get. It is um, Nirvana, here she comes now with uh, the Melvins and Buzzo. And this is an original on blue vinyl look at this uh, very rare very sought after so the seven inches after that i was like it's a deal we're doing it that's great that's yeah yeah it's more than fair because there's so much and actually i know everyone's gonna say i bet you ripped this guy off no i told him exactly you know we came to you know i didn't pay him a dollar each for this stuff i, I paid him very well and he actually was like what are the most valuable ones in here because like i said he they just want to know what that they want to know what this the valuable ones are just so they could celebrate that he had such good taste in music so i showed him the romana told him exactly what i was going to sell it for i showed him all those seven inches told him exactly what the the negative approach was selling for all that stuff so they know all that stuff and they're thrilled to see that this stuff is worth money and that that people are going to be appreciating it so um original meters uh original megaforce metallica uh, this is a Music for Nations, but uh, Master for Pu Master of Puppets. This is an original first press of Injustice for All. Original first press of uh, Ragged Glory, which is super rare. This is an original uh, first press of Funhouse. Let me show you some punk stuff now. Um, super rare. This is um, this is this one's actually so. There's two versions of this which this is a hard one to get and it's been out of print for a long time, but Double Nickels on the Dime. This is a first press of Double Nickels on the Dime, which I don't know which one I'm gonna keep. I have a repressing that I'll sell, but um, this one is the one I may keep, but this is a, a first press of that. And then this is a, it has to be an early reissue because there's nothing past 1992. Look at this uh, teal marbled vinyl on this one. Beautiful, um, tempted to keep them both. <laughs> Try not to. Um, you guys know what this is. I'm not going to say what it's called because um, of, you know, YouTube. They get mad. But this is a very, very, very rare uh, punk LP. Uh, this is Corrosion of Conformity. Very rare. This is the first pressing, first cover. 
Um, this is the second cover. So a lot of times he would have the same album, but he'd have the first pressing and the second pressing if there was a different color or colored vinyl or whatever. This is uh, Out of Step. This is the alternate recording. Had two of them. Um, this is the 350 cover of Out of Step. This is Minor Threat. Um, and, and as you might know, this is the first pressing with the red cover. And on the back, there's one that has a metallic text on the back. And one, this is the first press with the metallic text on the back. This is the second press with the gray text on the back. So, and this is still in the shrink. So, amazing punk stuff. I'm blowing through it, but this is amazing stuff. Original Arrested Development. This is all original stuff. Helmet, Mishnah Burma, a lot of... Um, a lot of butthole surfers, which they were laughing about it. They're like, that's the worst brand name ever, you know, but he had like everything they ever did. Um, this is the original Dead Kennedys with the band poster. Super, super clean. Um, Devo, I know you're thinking that's not really much of a grail, but this is the Canadian uh, multicolored disc, which is really hard to find. Melvin's Ozma. This is a... Uh, Really, really killer record. I love this one. I actually already have one. Uh, Pink Floyd Crackers uh, box set. This is a bootleg box set. Legendary. Uh, original Master Recording. Uh, Dark Side of the Moo bootleg. Half Speed Master. Um, he had all the Pixies stuff. Um, he had all that stuff. Uh, this original Reagan Youth. Uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers. It's Guar on a red vinyl. It's on red vinyl. I'm not gonna pull it out. Uh, this this Discord uh, flex your head. Uh, a few more Naked City. Uh, this are original uh, Soundgarden. This is a promo. Uh, White Zombie Soul Crusher. Uh, original Sonic Youth. These we never. I, I never see these. They never come into the shop. Um, Another one, original of this one on Coke Bottle Clear. Um, Biota, it's kind of a experimental type thing. Original Slayer, original Master Recording. Uh, some Scratch Acid, the Scratch Acid is still sealed, the two covers. Um, he had actually a lot of hip hop too. This is the original first press of Ghetto Boys crazy um green river drives a bone and this one i saw on the spreadsheet i was like there's no way this is an original there's no way this is an original and it's not but still um uh, it's a uh, like late 80s early 90s reissue of the uh, charles manson uh lie the love and terror cult which i actually do have an original of this but yeah it's still even rare um a few more and these next few i'm definitely going to keep um this is Jimi Hendrix broadcast. Anytime you see that colored vinyl stamp, it's always exciting to see what's inside. This is from Maui. It's a two album set. Uh, and that's on the yellow wax. And check this out. So, this is an old 70s bootleg, you know, with that colored wax is absolutely incredible. This is one I, I never see. This is ZZ Top Worldwide Texas Tour. This is, an, this is a promo, official release. This is a promo only release of a uh, live Texas uh, or live ZZ Top stuff um, that they did for that tour. Uh, original Meat Puppets. This is one I've looked for for years and years and years. This is Hi, How Are You? Daniel Johnson, original first press. So stoked to get this record. Been wanting it for so long. So I'm gonna take you through some of the other stuff. There's tons of punk, tons of jazz, tons of blues, tons of classic rock stuff. So. Um, I'm going to take you through and show you that stuff, and then I'm going to tell you how you can buy it. So this is the punk stuff, uh, some of the punk stuff. I pulled out um, just enough to show you guys. Like I said, there's 2,500 records, but I pulled out some really cool ones to show you. Um, this is, you know, punk, noise, experimental, all that stuff, but it is in the punk vein, I feel like. Um, these are all nothing... Is everything predates 1992, so all some really cool stuff in here.
original Funkadelic Maggot Brain. This is all Funkadelic Parliament stuff. This is some of the hip hop stuff. These are originals. That's an original check your head. in there we got more coming too this is the uh blue stuff um tons and tons i was shocked how much blues he had way more than you normally get in a collection This is a lot of the jazz stuff. Um, some of these are promos, like it's a, a promo of that. And some of these, just like the blues, some of them are reissues, but there's a lot of really good stuff. A lot of Sun Ra. A little stack of stuff that I'm kind of thinking about keeping. <laughs> Don't tell anybody but really killer stuff. A lot of it I've been looking for, so this is my keeper stack. All right, next I'm gonna take you through a lot of the like more classic rock stuff. Uh, there's some reggae in here too. It's kind of all over the place. Really clean Zeppelins. It's like the cleanest double platinum I've ever seen. Jane's Addiction. So, how to buy these records. Um, we are doing two things. Uh, first of all, every year on our anniversary, we do an anniversary 
drop uh, on uh, at our store. So that means we put out a ton of just killer, killer stuff to celebrate our anniversary. So we save stuff from months. Of, so we've been saving up stuff since like May. Just when really killer grails come in, we've been saving them up and stashing them away. And so we have a ton of stuff already saved up, but this stuff is just gonna be in addition to that. Um, so we're gonna do a huge drop on October 14th, 10 a.m. You gotta be there to buy, um, first come, first serve type situation. Um, and like I said, every, every record is going to have a sticker on the sleeve. And I'm actually gonna try to do an extra sticker, to, like with a peelable back on the inside so you can use a different sleeve if you want to, but I want those stickers to, to stay with the records if they can, so everyone will know who's ever owns the record, whose it was. That's that's our goal. Um, if you are not local to the store and you can't come in, we're, we do a thing called Whatnot. Uh, Whatnot is a live auction, uh, live stream auction type thing. I do it every week, do it every Tuesday. But we're going to do um, a whatnot stream with selections from here. So there's doubles of stuff. There's a lot of extra stuff. There's a ton of records. But I want to be able to send some of these all over the world. Uh, it's shipping worldwide. So anybody can get in. If you do not have a whatnot account, if you sign up with my link, which all the links will be below, just go through and read them. If you sign up with my link, you will get $15 free towards your first purchase. So that's just a $15 sign up. No strings attached it takes $15 off your first purchase. So make sure that you sign up with that link so you can get a $15 discount. Um, and then also under there will be the link to my Whatnot channel. And you can see my bookmarks. You can bookmark the shows that are coming up. Um, I've got a few coming up, but the one that will be this stuff will be the October 10th show, 7 p.m. Um, Eastern Standard Time. We're going to be auctioning that stuff off. So if you want to, if you love this story and you like I do and you want to get part of it, that's the way you can do it if you're not local. I really try my best to um, honor the family, honor Chris, and spread this stuff around to make sure that you know his legacy lives on and just that people know who he was and they, they know where these records came from. This is a really cool thing that we're trying to do to honor the family, to honor Chris. Uh, the family's really excited about it. They're very happy with it. If you knew Chris and you know who I'm talking about, um, Larry wants to talk to you. So I'm going to put his email address on the screen right here. You can contact Larry if you want to share stories about Chris, if you just want to reach out, you want to check in. Larry said he would love to hear from you. Larry is Chris's brother. Actually, at our anniversary sale, Larry is going to be there and he just wants to see people excited about him. So Larry's probably going to be hanging out, just watching people uh, get the records and he's like really excited to just see people excited to get these records. So it's a really cool thing. It's very different. You know, most of the time when you buy collections, they're not involved afterwards, but it's just a beautiful thing that all this stuff that the family, it was a style of music that they didn't, they didn't care anything about, but they, they started to care about it because it mattered to him. And that's just really touching to me. So thank you all for taking the time to watch this video. Uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, drop us a comment. We The main thing we want out of this is to make sure that people are talking about it and uh, they're aware of it. Thank you all so much and we'll see you guys next time.